It's Ben here, and here in this video, we're going to have a look at how we add basic shapes in Final Cut Pro. So this could be a circle, a square, a triangle. There's a few different approaches to this. We're going to cover a few of them, talk about how we add outlines and that type of thing as well. So we're going to jump in first of all, and have a look at how we add the basic shapes with the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro. So with our new timeline set up here, we're going to come up to our titles and generators up at the top, and we're going to scroll all the way down to our elements. And it's basically in here that you'll find your basic shapes within Final Cut Pro, and it's all in this one shapes plugin. So when we drag this down to the timeline, you can see we get this white circle with a red outline on it. That's the kind of basic shape. We have an on-screen controller that allows us to move it around the canvas. And then if we come up into our inspector, into the generators tab here, you can see we've got options for that shape. Now the first thing we've got is a list of the different shapes that we can create within Final Cut Pro. So we've got squares, we've got diamonds, we've got rectangles, pentagons, hexagons, and so on and so forth, some five-sided stars, and also some arrows as well, and that type of thing. So we've got a good selection of kind of basic shapes that we can work with. A few different things about the way these shapes work. There's some little quirks with them that don't work as well as you might want them to. So if we go to the circle, for instance, then you can see the roundness doesn't really affect the roundness, it affects the size of your circle. So you can see here, as we change the size of it, we can change the size of that circle by modifying this option. Uh, we can change the fill color by dragging along the colors here. So just dropping down that little arrow, and then the outline color in the same way by dropping down the, the color option there. We can turn off the fill or the outline. With the outline, turned off then if we come up to our library and we'll jump in and grab this video that circle will be empty so we can basically kind of add it on top of video seems to have landed nicely on top of this surfer here but basically we can get it to be transparent in the middle as with all of our shapes so then obviously there's other options in here which aren't really relevant things like the the square and the bevel don't really make any difference. And then we've got things like the drop shadow opacity. We can see our drop shadow increasing or decreasing there, and we can blur that drop shadow as well. So we can get those shapes to kind of nicely pop out here as well. We've got the outline width as well. So you can see we can increase and decrease the width in pixels. And then we've got the drop shadow angle, which is gonna change the way the shadow falls there. So some basic kind of nice options that we've got for editing and modifying this circle. So let's just go down to our timeline. I'm gonna do Shift and Z, and I'm just gonna shorten down the circle here. We'll come back to our titles and generators and we'll add this shape again. And then in here, we're gonna have a look at the square option. Now with square, we have options for the roundness, so we can make a rounded square. We have options for the outline width, so we can change the width of that outline. And then some of the same options like the drop shadow, um, opacity and that type of thing that we can also modify as well. Now with the square and some of the other shapes, we don't really have any options for kind of changing the dimensions of that square. We do have the, the rectangle option, which gives us this very specific rectangle. So if we take off all the roundness there, I'm gonna drop down my outline width. You can see we get this rectangle here. Now obviously we can change things like the, the square edges to bevel, and so on and so forth. So when we look at the edges here, we get that beveled edge. Now, one of the main issues I have with this particular option is that if we wanna change the dimensions of our rectangle, then the only way we can do it is by using the transform tool here. So basically we can increase the height of it to make it a slightly different size rectangle, but then we get these kind of strange things happening with the outline here. So that's not really gonna work for what we, we need. One way around this is to actually take the outline off of here. And then once we've got our rectangle as we want it, so I'm gonna take off the drop shadow, drop down the opacity. Let's make this a yellow rectangle so that we can see it here. And then in order to actually add an outline to this rectangle, which is a slightly different dimension, I'm gonna to come to my plugins here and we're gonna use the Brett FX power tools and the outline option here. So I'm gonna drag this outline on, but you'll see we still get that same problem. We need to go through one more step to actually get this to fix it. And that is to basically turn this into a compound clip. So I'm gonna to go to 
File, New and Compound Clip. And then here we'll just click OK. And then when we add the outline here, it's not going to have that strange distortion. So basically, we've got our rectangle, we've got our outline here, and we can modify the color of it just as we did before. We're just using that extra kind of effect plugin to add our outline onto the outside of this rectangle here. Now, if we need to change the size of the rectangle, we can always double click into our compound clip and we can then come up here. Easiest way to change the size of the rectangle is just to come to the video options and I'm gonna change the, the Y scale. So I can basically increase this or decrease this or decrease or increase the width of it there by scaling the X and Y points. The nice thing here, when we come back, that distortion of the outline is not gonna be there. I'm gonna turn off my transform options here. So that's one way of fixing that. Now, obviously, just gonna duplicate this clip along the timeline one more time. And we're gonna drag this down here again. So we've got these other options in here which are pretty straightforward to work with, um, such as the pentagon, pretty straightforward, and then things like the octagon, the stars, and that type of thing. We can change the, the roundness of these, we can get these kind of squidgy star shapes, and then we can obviously change the outlines and that type of thing as well. The one shape that's missing from here is the triangle. So we're just gonna have a look at how we make a triangle, and then that will also open up how you would make kind of more custom shapes within Final Cut Pro. So for this, I'm gonna to come to my solids option here, and we are gonna bring down a custom solid. So in here, we've got a black shape. In our generator inspector up here, we've got options for the color, so we can change this to any color that we want. We can now basically make this any shape by using a mask. So if I come to my masks across in the effects on the right-hand side, I'm gonna use a draw mask. Now with a draw mask, you're kind of freeform drawing for something like a triangle, which is not always ideal because you're not sure exactly where things are gonna land. So what I prefer to do, if I just undo those, is if I use a shape mask, I'm gonna drag my shape mask on. I'm gonna come up to the video tab here where we'll have the options for that shape mask. I'm gonna take this draw mask off, just delete that, we don't need it. And I'm gonna change my feather first of all to zero. And this little white circle at the top left, I'm going to drag that all the way to the edge, which means I have um, zero curvature on my rounded edges. So basically, I've just taken all that curvature off. Now, there's an option in here which allows me to convert this to points. So essentially, if we convert that now, we have these four points. We know exactly where they are, that they're positioned nicely there. And then I can delete these points. So if I click up here on the top left, I can right click and then go to delete point. And now what I can do is I can modify the position of this point up here. So it's turned into a draw mask, it means I have these control points for my draw mask here. And basically in the middle here is zero. So you can see, I think point one is my top right point. So if I come to X and tap zero, it's gonna make a perfect triangle. Seems like a little bit of a roundabout way to make it. We can obviously kind of modify this as we want. Um, and you can see even if we drag it kind of close to the middle here, if we want a different shape triangle, then we can always tap a zero in there. And then once we've got the triangle with the proportions that we want it to have, then we can come to our transform options and we can scale it up and scale it down as we want to. And then also if we want to, we can come to our BrightFX power tools. So the outline is in the light or the free version of the power tools. So we can add that there and then we have an outline for our triangle. We can again modify the color for that and get it color that we want. The one thing we can't do is kind of remove the fill color here without removing the outline. It doesn't uh, work in that way when we're kind of working with this particular tool, but we can create these triangles. So now I can scale this up, I can rotate it, I can move it around. I can come back up to my video options. We can reset some of those transform options. So for instance, the rotation, I'm gonna reset that. I can reset things like the scale as well. And basically we've got some nice level of control with that uh, kind of triangle shape. Now obviously with the tools that we have here, we use the shape mask and then converted it basically to the draw mask. We can create some more custom shapes here as well with the draw mask. So 
if I just change the color of my solid here to a different color, doesn't matter too, too much which color it is. You can grab the draw mask. Uh, now I can click and hold and I can draw out kind of any custom shape that I want. Okay, so just like we would draw in Adobe Illustrator or another vector graphics program, we can draw right inside Final Cut Pro. So you can see we can create any custom shape here just as we would in Adobe Illustrator or another drawing app using the Draw Mask tool. We can also modify these points. So if I drag these out, I can modify the angle. I can also right click on them and convert them to a linear point and then kind of modify each angle as I want to by switching between linear or smooth to kind of change how it flows. If I want to delete a draw mask, I can click on it up here and then delete that draw mask and then drag a new one on to draw again. So like this time I can click point to point and we can create any custom shape that we want there. Now lastly, one very cool thing we can do, I'm just going to come back to my triangle here. I'm going to turn off the outline, delete the outline. I'm going to come back to my Brett FX power tools and this time I'm going to have a look at the extrude option that we have here. So I'm going to drag this onto my triangle and you can see now we can create these 3D shapes using the Brett FX plugins in Final Cut Pro and we can use those with our custom shapes. I'm just going to hold shift and tap Z or we can use it with the kind of pre-built shapes from within Final Cut Pro. So if I take off my outline here, I can drag on extrude and you can see we get this kind of cool squidgy star shape, which is a 3D extruded. Change the, the color of this and we can modify under our extrude kind of how we want that shadow to work. So basically we've got some options for how bright we want the front or back to be and then also some options for the face brightness and the back size and that kind of thing. So we can create some very kind of cool shapes using this option. Again, for the basic shapes like the circle, if we come here and turn off that drop shadow option, bring the extrude in here, we can start to create some cool tube-like effects within Final Cut Pro and again kind of changing the, the color of our circle here to get that 3D extruded shape. So hopefully this is a good overview of how we can add some basic shapes within Final Cut Pro using things like the 3D tools, how we can modify the size of those shapes, position them, and then also avoid some of the strange things happening with the outlines, how we can get into even adding more custom shapes within Final Cut Pro where we need to. These can be useful backgrounds for type if we're adding that over our video or for kind of creating graphic content actually right in Final Cut Pro before thinking about starting to learn another program like Apple Motion. So I hope this is useful if you need to add basic shapes to Final Cut Pro. If you have any questions, then please do leave comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.